Hey everyone, Joe here, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this awesome silicone mold. It's pretty simple to do once you get it right, and it's useful for making copies of any object. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is grab an object that you want to mold, and in my case, I'm going to use a gossip stone. Whatever your object is, just make sure it has a flat bottom. Next, find something to mold it in. And in my case, I'm using my adjustable mold box. If you want to see how to build this, you can look at my past video and I'll link in the description. If you don't have one of these or don't want to build one, you could always use a cardboard box or a Tupperware container, so long as it fits about a quarter inch to a half inch on all sides and it's taller than the object, about a, also about a half inch. So I'm just going to place my object right here in the center and just adjust my mold box so it's about a half inch on all sides. So something like, something like that will do. For those of you who did build this mold box, you'll notice that on the side here, I have that same window installation that I put in the bottom on the sides. I just did that to help prevent the leaking of silicone. Even though we'll be using clay later on in the process to help seal it, I just used this for another layer of protection. All right, and then we clamp this together. And if you're the one using the cardboard box or Tupperware, I guess the Tupperware doesn't really matter so much, but if you're using the cupboard box, if you have any corner that might look like it might leak, use some hot glue or model clay to seal it up. You'll see that in a second. Now before I pour the silicone in, I want to make sure that my mold box is sealed. Even though I did put window insulation on the bottom, it's not enough to seal the corners of my mold box. So for that, I'll be using modeling clay. Make sure you use ones that are sulfur free. If you don't, it could inhibit the curing of silicone, meaning it won't cure at all or it won't cure in some places. If you're using a cardboard box, use hot glue. All right, perfect, it's all sealed up. And you'll notice that I was using latex gloves. This is because I feel like when I'm using modeling clay, using gloves seems to help me smooth out the clay and, and kind of insulate it or seal it off. And I'm using just my bare hands, I feel like it's hard to work with. Maybe it's just me, but I found it easier. I'm gonna be hot gluing my object to the bottom to make sure it doesn't float when I pour the silicone in. If your object's pretty heavy, you may not have to do this. If you have squeeze out from the glue, just clean it up with an X-Acto knife or anything that's kind of easy to work with. Now the better of a seal you have on the bottom of the object, the less silicone will seep into it and you won't have to clean up as much later. But I probably should have glued more to the center just because cleaning out the glue on the outside is a lot harder than cleaning up the silicone after it's molded. So keep this in mind. Great, now we can finally begin pouring. But before we do that, we're gonna have to know how much silicone we gotta use up. So we'll have to measure the length and the width of the box. So here I have five and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. And the object's height is roughly three inches. So I'll have to do about three and a half inches. Just take these three measurements and multiply them all together to get a volume that's in cubic inches. The silicone that I'll be using is called Dragon Skin 30. I like this one because it has a pot life or it starts kind of solidifying in around 45 minutes. So it gives me plenty of time to work. I also use another one called Old Star 15 from the same company, Smooth On. These are my go-to silicones. You can also use whatever you want, but this is the one that I suggest. And to use this is pretty simple. You just gotta mix equal parts of part A and part B, stir it together, pour in the mold box, and wait for it to dry. For my mixing container, I'll be using these popcorn buckets. You can use a plastic bucket, but these are pretty cheap and inexpensive, and they also have this wax lining, so no silicone leaks out easily. Now before I mix in the silicone parts A and part B into each bucket here, I'm going to be pre-measuring these out. So for my mold box, I get about 111 cubic inches, which translates to about 62 fluid ounces. And to measure them out, I'll be using this measuring cup. And since I have 62 fluid ounces to go, since this is one part A and one part B, I need half to go in here and half to go in there, which means I need about 31 fluid ounces of part A in here and 31 fluid ounces of part B in here. Now you don't have to put in the part A and part B into your measuring cup. You can use a placeholder. And the best thing that I found so far is some rice. So just measure it out and place hold it in. That's about 31 fluid ounces of rice. Mark the height and repeat for the other bucket. And once you have two of them marked, you might want to just re-measure it just to make sure they're at the same height because for rice, it tends to clump up if you don't have it totally level. 
You could use water too, but it's very hard to get these completely dry to not ruin the silicone. So I just suggest using rice and double check with the ruler. And before you use this stuff, you want to make sure to stir well before using. So just open it up, cut it open, and pre-stir. About a minute is fine. And once pre-stirred, just fill it up to your mark. And once you have both parts A and B in separate containers, just take one and mix it with the other. When you do this, make sure you get everything on the side wall to be inside the bucket here. Because if you don't have them together with equal parts, your silicone may not cure. Once they're together, just make sure you stir about a minute. I'm a little uh, crazy with it. I go five minutes because I really want to make sure this is totally mixed up. Okay, I've been mixing for about five minutes. I could pour it in right now, but to make sure that I really got all the stuff scraped off the bottom and the sides of this bucket, I'm gonna pour into a second bucket and mix again. All right, perfect. Now before pouring, you do wanna make sure you hit the lowest level in your mold box. You don't wanna pour over the object. It's not gonna give you an even consistency inside the mold. It might make air bubbles or voids. And when you do pour, try to pour high up. By making a long, thin stream, you'll be able to siphon out those air bubbles so you'll get a nice, clean, and consistent silicone mold. Now, it looks like I made a little bit of an error for calculation. I probably undermeasured, and I also do have some silicone stuck to the bucket, but that's okay. I'm gonna be making this work the lazy way. And this is a good lesson. Always be more generous than you think you need to be with your silicone. So the idea is I'm going to take something else that will actually displace the silicone upwards just so it's enough to cover the object. Alright, so I saved myself this time. So next time I'm going to make sure that I put more silicone to my calculation just so I don't get stuck in this kind of situation again. Yeah, it's going to look kind of messed up, but I'll show you how to fix it up later. Now I think it's about 18 hours until I have to demold this but I'm gonna wait the entire 24 hours just to be safe. All right, it's about a day later and the silicone is pretty hard, so uh, let's check out what's inside. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty weird. Let's see if I can get this undone here. All right, there's that clay under underside. And uh, there's the part. Now, I think what I'm gonna do next is try to cut out the silicone that leaked underneath here just so the object has some movement to get free. And if you notice, right over here, some of the object fell off or actually stuck to the hot glue and stayed on the table. This is because this gossip stone was 3D printed and I kind of expected that, but if you got a pretty solid object that's made of metal or plastic and it's not 3D printed or it's not deformable, it'll definitely be okay with hot glue. Okay, it's so all cleaned up the best I could for now and let me see if I can get all this wood out. All right, and this is how it looks with no wood in it. Before I start trying to take away this gossip stone from the mold, I would like to cut this down to size just so it's easier to work with. All right, much better. Let's try to demold this now. Cool, looks like it worked pretty well. And if you look inside, you can see the detail was still maintained. One thing to note that my gossip stone had a kind of a sprayed on stony texture to it. So it did come off a little bit during the demolding process. You'll notice that in the mold, you'll see little black bits. You could avoid this by buying this, um, it's kind of like a weird like gel paste kind of thing. You brush it onto your object and it'll actually seal up all of these little bits here. And that's okay, it, it works for smoothing it out and demolding it, but you might lose some detail, which is why I didn't use it for my mold. This was a little bit of a challenge to demold, but that's okay for me. But if you want a relatively painless process, you could use a release agent. Basically, this is just a spray that you put over on your object while it's in the mold box. You wait about five minutes, then you pour your silicone in. So when you do demold your object, it should be a little bit easier, if not really easy, to demold. And to give you a better idea on how the detail came out, I made an ice cube. Pretty cool, right? Thank you so much for watching this video. Just want to give a quick shout out to my latest subscriber, Pumpin' Polly. 
you're awesome. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below.